Uh, good uh, uh, morning, dear friends. I, behalf, uh, I would like to make my presentation. Uh, uh, Desynchronosis is uh, our concern. Yesterday, we were we had a very long day and uh, the shortest night. This concerns not only St. Petersburg, but it also concerns Petrozavod, from which I have come. And naturally, we have white nights that are much longer and lighter, and uh, uh, we suffer from the light desynchronosis from which you suffer in St. Petersburg. Our studies started in 2003, uh, due to Vladimir Nikolaevich, who directed us and who uh, was our leader. And for 16 years, we have been dealing with this problem. Uh, during that time, the attitude to melatonin has changed significantly, which we had to study because light dysynchronosis is related naturally. Uh, with epiphyson, uh, with uh, melatonin, there are different sections, as you ha see, that have appeared: chronobiology, chronomedicine, chronotherapy, chronopharmacology, and melatonin is a universal agent because, on the one hand, it represents a hormone, and on the other hand, it is a mediator. And as you see, there are different images of that third eye on Egyptian frescoes, on old engravings, and even here. Uh, this is the lower picture to the left. Uh, these are uh, circles on the fields, uh, which are quite popular in the UK. That is also a formula of melatonin. Obviously, the people from other planets are also interested in melatonin. The history of discovery is well known. I won't uh, detailize on it now, but from 1958 uh, to 2006, uh, they actively studied melatonin, and it appeared that we can distinguish a separate, uh, separate melatonin energetic system. Uh, different uh, properties of melatonin were distinguished. We are currently interested in geroprotective properties and oncostatic effect of melatonin, which we are studying. According to the discoveries of 2006, probably you can see that melatonin energetic system, and I specialize as a pharmacologist, so I'm interested in it, is the only system which is characterized by these four distinctive features from other urgic systems which we know, sympathetic system, parasympathetic system, we have got accustomed to them, light sensitivity, uh, uh, diurnal seasonal activity and progressing uh, decrease with age is uh, not characteristic of any urgic system of our organism. In the history of discovery and further discoveries, two Nobel Prizes were awarded in 2009-2017 in medicine. They confirmed that the interest of that problem is not weakening and there is much to be done and to be learned because the discoveries of the aging mechanisms, the discoveries of the uh, mechanism of psychedel risk is just a small part of what we know today. They discovered species of melatonin receptors. Uh, first, that was uh, only one subtype. Now we know three subtypes of membrane receptors, two subtypes of nuclear receptors. It is known that these receptors, depending on the time of the day, change their sensitivity. I look further. So there is a pharmacology. There is a reliable group that is now called uh, uh, mimetics of a melatonin system that is not only melatonin, but uh, there are uh, and now the state the register of the drugs, polypeptide complexes of pieces are uh, uh, register stimulators or melanin retentors that are antidepressants. Uh, uh, 
we know what uh, the applicator of synthesis of melatonin is given. There is a certain group of drugs uh, which I'm not going to discuss today that block the synthesis of melatonin uh, and uh, sleeplessness and the light uh, at night. Uh, looking at how lady uh, transmeridial flights, uh, jet lag, and social jet lags from which all of us suffer. Because uh, during one week we uh, walk, uh, wake up early in the morning and we sleep long uh, on uh, weekends uh, uh, or during holidays. So that is social jet lag. I'd like to tell you about our experiment because uh, that was just an introduction. We uh, have model, uh, modeled a lot of different conditions. That is the history of dyssynchronosis. That is constant lighting, the so-called light. But uh, contamination that term um, is used in size our white nights uh, and uh, darkness and light deprivation, just the modeling of the beginning of action. During these years, we have developed different schemes, impact on pregnant uh, females, on progeny, on the newborns, uh, uh, mature and uh, old rats. Since today, we are discussing melatonin and synthetic tetrapeptide epitalone. This is the, uh, a simple scheme of an experiment which shows a natural lighting in Krele, our white nights, and the light which uh, uh, can uh, people see uh, through the windows when we, uh, they live in Krele, constant lighting and uh, common control. That is what we determined. I won't list all these biomarkers because they are quite numerous, and we have been working with rats. You have seen rats of Leo line and uh, Vister line rats, and I'd like to show only a small part, a period of postnatal life. All of you know that in humans and in rats, uh, any uh, life can be divided into certain periods. So that is progressive growth, stable growth, and pre-old uh, age growth. Why can I press this button? What? Abratite. And. Uh, natural lighting in Karelia. It's shown here rats were growing uh, uh, during winter and autumn period, and they displayed progressive growth retardation. Uh, it's common knowledge that up north people mature much slower than down south. That is stable growth for months and then pre senescent period. So uh, living in the north, we mature early, but we age. Uh, uh, earlier as we mature later, but we age uh, earlier as well. Uh, here is the coefficient, actually. If the age is 24 months, then uh, the worst uh, indicators are natural lighting in Karelia and constant lighting. Uh, as to what, uh, what has been mentioned before, this is glucose, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, abdominal obesity, body mass, and so on. In conditions of light pollution, 50% of rats uh, had uh, over excess body mass, more than uh, 300, uh, for, uh, 340 grams. Uh, they uh, look like a hamster, more like a normal rat. They are obese. Uh, as to the regular astral cycles, uh, in previous presentations it was mentioned that this is the uh, indicator of aging of female reproductive system. If uh, animals were in constant uh, or natural lighting in Karelia, uh, females were aging much 
faster than males. Uh, this slide shows the uh, number of diseases per one animal. It's post-mortem analysis when we did post-mortem uh, autopsy and we identified histological those diseases. Animals which throughout their lives were treated to melatonin or epitalone had much less diseases than rats in the control group. Here is the dynamics of emergence of tumor in different light uh, regimes. Green color shows natural lighting in Karelia. Uh, navy blue color of the uh, uh, graph shows constant lighting. Uh, and uh, you can see that there were way more uh, tumors developed, benign and malignant as well. Uh, so we confirmed all the studies. Uh, which Vladimir Nikolaevich had about the fact that our uh, distortion of light regime provokes the growth of tumors, reduces life expectancy, and brings about lots of different age-related diseases. There is one work, I think we are familiar with it. It's written by, done by Borisenko and Anisimov about development of different oncological diseases and the changes from north to south. As to breast culture, prostate cancer, uh, uh, uteral uh, body cancer, uh, large intestine cancer is increasing uh, in people from south to north. So our experiments and statistical data are indicative of the same thing. Uh, um, Administration of melatonin uh, in natural lighting of Karelia reduced the number of rats with tumor and survival curve was shifted rightwards. Uh, mindful of melatonin and uh, lighting pollution, same story. Green graph shows melatonin and survival. These are females, those are males. That's the emergence of the first tumor. Let's see, it's about 600 days, and their number is less. Synthetic heteropeptides of apophis also showed better results than melatonin. Here are the rats. Here is the development of tumor. Here are rats. Here are malignant tumors. That's control. And that is epitalone administration. And uh, this is life expectancy in application of epitalone. We can see uh, the rightward shift of the curves. And as to light pollution, there are uh, those uh, graphs which are exactly the same as in natural lighting, ambient light, that is. So total assessment of melatonin and epitalone impact uh, upon those indicators, which I'm going to present to you uh, in my speech, were coinciding. Homeostatic stability coefficient was higher, metabolic syndrome reduced life expectancy, increased spontaneous cancerogenesis in rats we studied by the same token was less. Uh, I would like to say that our studies confirm preclinical trials uh, uh, which were conducted by other specialists. Uh, these are the data from the literature. They substantiate the mechanism of action of melatonin. Why it pre prevents or retards the tumor development? It's those works from which uh, we've taken those conclusions. Uh, and another word, uh, work which shows clinical studies of melatonin and its impact upon oncological diseases. In this article, more than 5,000 articles actually were reviewed. 
That's what the authors of this review article are saying about their mutual analysis. Uh, actually, our emission frequency is higher than in control group. Total survival is higher than in control group. Neurotoxicity or anthropocytopenia and asthenia during chemotherapy is reduced. That's their conclusion. So thank you very much. I'm in favor of melatonin. And uh, I uh, take it uh, during white night season. Since 2003, I have been taking melatonin at white nights especially. Thank you. Are there any questions, Claudia? Yes. The following question. Maybe it's too simplistic, but uh, uh, yesterday and the days that we spent in uh, St. Petersburg and previously in Stockholm, uh, we are from Bologna, so much more south. And at uh, 10 uh, p.m., it was uh, totally light. The, it was so. Uh, if uh, what you said is true, there should be a, a higher frequency of tumors from south to north because. Mm -hmm. Northern people are uh, exposed practically 24 hours to light during summer and uh, a lot of dark during winter. Mm -hmm. So the, the production of melatonin should be quite different from uh, Mediterranean people or Southern European people like uh, Italians and people from Bologna. Uh, the speaker didn't listen to the translation, unfortunately. Uh, so according to the statistical data, uh, the entire northern part including not just Russian North, Karelia and Murmansk and uh, Kyrgyzk region in the Russian North, but all our Nordic countries, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Norway uh, there is an elevated level of oncological disease of the reproductive system. It could be malignant tumor, tumors and benign tumors, but it's male gland tumor, it's uh, uh, cervical, uteral uh, cancer, uh, benign tumors in males, and uh, malignant uh, prostate cancer in uh, men, uh, and uh, uh, large intestine uh, cancer, typical for northern regions. I should uh, slightly correct you, because in Sweden, uh, number one is lung cancer, but not milk gland cancer, like you say. That's number one. Moreover, the level of emergence of cancer in Sweden is drastically lower vis-a-vis -vis other countries. And uh, there is another question I have related to that. The genetics of emergence of milk gland cancer, uh, prostate cancer, uh, GI cancer, it's different. But you are seeing that uh, uh, when there is a lot of light constantly, everything is uh, changing in a similar way. How does it happen? Thank you. I've got it. Uh, as to the uh, plethora of factors, different cancerogenic risk factors are around. We cannot account uh, uh, them uh, for uh, the shift in light uh, regime, in, regime only. So the causes uh, triggering the emergence of cancer could be different. We don't claim we made an eye-opener discovery, but nonetheless, uh, the uh, distortion and light regime provokes those tumors. How about Alaska, North America? Do they have more cancer there? Not in Alaska. I'll comment on that. There is data which is published in 2006 in the Circumpolar Medicine Journal. American team 
studied the uh, breast cancer frequency over 30 years uh, uh, between 1969 to 2006. In uh, indigenous people in Alaska, they could in right, uh, and it went up threefold, uh, they say, due to unknown reason, like they say. In 2016, same team of authors published a new article uh, demonstrating that there are two more types of tumor which have been increasing. And what was there uh, in the previous uh, uh, years, uh, they lived in a teepee in Alaska, and they only had a kerosene lamp there. Now, now they have got electricity, they have got computer and the night, light pollution in polar night is much stronger than previously. The cities are sparkling with lights. American Israeli uh, team of authors in 2006, Knock and others, they've demonstrated, uh, they've taken a photo. Uh, it was a satellite image uh, of Israel. And they showed that the map of light uh, pollution distribution coincide with each and every case of uh, milk uh, of uh, breast cancer. They were amazed, and they covered 64 countries by this study, and so they received the same results. Full coincidence. Light. Uh, Pollution provokes most of the tumors nowadays, but there is no direct correlation uh, for those northern uh, people with uh, cervical cancer and GI uh, cancer. Down south, infections are uh, disseminating uh, more rapidly. As to South Africa, it's very close to South Pole. Uh, they don't have light pollution uh, in South Africa. No microphone is used, unfortunately. It's all wasted on the interpreter. Well, bear with me one more second. Uh, there was a rather funny story at Max Planck Institute when uh, one of the scientists demonstrated that uh, the life expectancy of people born in winter, December to February, is higher than those uh, who were uh, born in uh, summer. And it's just there is reverse in the southern hemisphere. Uh, she explained that maybe it's due to the fact that pregnancy, pregnancy is more benign uh, in those who were born in winter, and their pregnancy was uh, because pregnancy of the mothers was in summer, let's say. As to mice and rats, 21 days pregnant, flies which don't have uh, uh, pregnancy. And there was actually uh, that scientist, uh, uh, Jim Carrey, he's got the largest collection of Mediter Mediterranean flies. Uh, and Irina sent data on rats and mice, seasonal fluctuations as to rats and flies. Those who were born in winter live longer although they have got the uh, standard regime. So there are geophysical factors, which are very important, which were mentioned by Sergei Ivanov in his brief uh, discussion presentation. Christian Barsh demonstrated that solar activity, and the phrase is not finished. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. Please go on. Uh, no, no, I, 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 I was wondering that here there is uh, another big variables and this is uh, sleep yeah. because uh, uh, in Bologna I am affiliated with uh, an institute which uh, has a long uh, tradition of studying uh, sleep and uh, it uh, apparently is uh, short sleep is one of the most uh, okay. powerful uh, uh, risk factor because uh, generate uh, inflammation and uh, an increase of activity of the sympathetic system. Uh, so I wonder uh, uh, that the results, uh, that the spectacular, very interesting results that has been shown by melatonin, if they have an effect on the sleeping time or the sleeping quality of the animals that uh, in any case, I think that uh, should be 
assessed in order to understand what is going on. Uh, well, if circuit rhythm is reduced, they live less long. Life expectancy is reduced. Insomnia uh, just uh, is a very big risk factor for uh, breast cancer in uh, people as well. Same goes for large intestine uh, cancer. Melatonin retards the cancer of uh, large intestine. Exactly. So in order to understand the mechanisms underpinning the effect of melatonin, I think that it could be interesting to check if some of the beneficial effects of melatonin are provided because of an effect on the sleep quality and quantity. So this, this is, I think that this is important. Yeah. Yeah, yes. There are papers in this. Yeah. Ah, there are papers. Yes, yes, it was evident. Because, uh, because. Uh, I remember you, the, what I showed you, that the centenarians sleep so well. <laughs> yes, it's very uh, good to sleep well. But when we sleep more than 10 hours, that's detrimental because you'll sleep all your life through and miss many interesting events in your life. Uh, yeah, so Irina, uh, well, uh, she demonstrated that those who were born in August or born in October, uh, sometimes their life expectancy was different. Yes, we worked with rat models. Uh, there were some rats who were born in autumn, some born in uh, uh, spring. And this effect mentioned by Vladimir Nikolaevich, those who were born in autumn or winter period, they live longer. That was true. We studied melatonin receptor blocker was in doll. We finished this experiment. Rats, uh, uh, which are administered, was in doll. Melatonin receptor blockers live much less than controls uh, or rats on melatonin. We only just finalized that experiment, and we made calculation of the results. Thank you very much. Uh, I can add another information. Uh, that we have uh, completed a study uh, where we supplemented with a Mediterranean diet for one year to more than 1,250 people in different countries. And of course, uh, you can start the Mediterranean diet in summer and you finish in summer. Or you can start in winter and so on. And we have found that uh, the seasonality of giving the Mediterranean diet is very important. So also the seasonality of the diet, because I don't know, uh, maybe the, the, the mice uh, do not have uh, a different diet in summer and winter, but uh, in Italy we have a different diet in summer and winter. So it could be interesting not only to look where they were born, but to have a different uh, type of diet according to the season. It's a good comment. The last question. You mentioned that you take melatonin. In what form? As a by additive of a pharmaceutical drug and what dose? As a drug with small doses, one milligram and naturally uh, during the interseasonal period in spring and uh, in uh, autumn election. She's not using the microphone, I can't translate. Something about vitamins that doctors recommend to take in winter. Now another drug was issued that is called circadine for the people over 55 only as uh, uh, people, uh, as a drug to provoke sleep, so uh, they presume that uh, age uh, decreases as such uh, that uh, a, per, uh, a person and, uh, after 55 can take hormones, uh, nothing will be taken. You cannot take hormones uh, constantly, that's clear.
No microphone. And I wanted to tell that if you take melatonin, you have to take it during uh, uh, between the seasons when the circadian rhythms are disturbed to mobilize them. Sometimes 10 days are enough, sometimes three weeks. And that circa gene of two milligrams is indicated only for people above 55. Logically, it would be correct to measure the level of your melatonin, and depending on that level, take the drug. But unfortunately, we haven't reached that level yet. Thank you. Much younger, you know. <laughs> Yes. So, so, we'll have...